All right, I want to make a video just about talking about cracking pressures and check valves here. So cracking pressure is the amount of pressure you need to open the check valve essentially. Not fully open it, but where it just starts to crack open, where it just barely get a little bit of flow going through the check valve, that's a cracking pressure. Another way to think about cracking pressure is the amount of preload that's internal to the check valve that wants to keep it closed. So normally when you have a, a check valve, there's some amount of spring force that if there's no pressure either way, the check valve's closed. That amount of force is the preload. So that preloaded force has to be overcome um, in the flow direction in order to get flow through your check valve. And so you can imagine there's some relationship then between the amount of preload the, the, or the cracking pressure and how well the check valve seals. The harder you keep that check valve closed, the better seal you're going to have if everything else is constant. So generally, if you need a really tight seal, you're going to want a higher cracking pressure. But higher cracking pressures come with their own problems because generally as, as you start applying pressure in the forward direction, you want flow to occur. So then there's this relationship you have to um, decide on in your check valve of what's that balance between how good of a seal do I need and how much cracking pressure can I get away with my application. In a perfect world, you know, mainly a lot of check valves wouldn't have any cracking pressure, you know, and, and as soon as there was a little bit of forward pressure, the valve would be completely wide open. Um, that's just not possible from a practical standpoint, and so we have to make the trade-offs, again, between that preloaded uh, force and, and the cracking pressure and how good of a seal we get. So one last thing I wanted to talk about then was the tolerance of the cracking pressure. So there are some things um, that are just inherent to the, uh, any check valve design. Things like mechanical stack up, uh, the spring rig tolerance, the durometer uh, tolerance inside a check valve. Those will all certainly impact the crack and pressure tolerance. But there's, there's one thing that is really gonna impact it from an application standpoint, and that is the fluid that's going through the check valve. So when we make a check valve, we test it with air pressure uh, to make sure that cracking pressure is correct. But if you're putting a different fluid through there, and that could be a lubricated air, that could be water, that could be a chemical, um, I mean, you name it, it's going to get in between all the components inside the check valve. And when the check valve goes to close, there's going to be a little bit of that fluid left there. And that's going to impact how much the check valve wants to stick or not stick um, closed. This isn't such a big deal when you're talking about you know, some higher pressures. But when you get um, to lower pressure, especially you know, let's say under one PSI, um, those, those little sticking forces um, actually do add up to something and will actually impact um, how much it takes to open the check valve. So something to think about there. And I would just encourage you to test it in your application with your fluid um, and just see if you get different results in air versus um, whatever fluid is going through your system. So we talked about what cracking pressure is, um, kind of some of the things uh, internal to the check valve um, that, that affect that, and then also um, some things that can affect the tolerance in there. So we love talking about check valves, uh, especially for OEM applications. Um, we, we provide check valve solutions to a lot of different industries. So uh, reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you about your application and uh, find something that works for you guys. So air-logic.com. Um, if you want some samples or some help with your application.